there's a lot of discussion out there about how to get involved in the credit card game and how to rack up points, how to redeem those points and get outsized value for travel and just great experiences in life. But what often isn't discussed is the danger of credit cards. This is a game. It's a game that the banks institute and they bank on many, many, many more people not playing the game smart. And therefore, those people fund the very small percentage of people who get maximum outsized value out of this. So how do you make sure you're one of the winners and not one of the losers? Well, I think that there's several strategies and it doesn't just have to do with what credit cards you get or, you know, how you play this game. It has to do with your overall finances and how you see credit cards as part of those overall finances. So today we're gonna to talk about how it is that you make credit cards a winning part of an overall winning strategy in your finances in your life. So if you would, both hit that like and subscribe button, turn on the notifications and stay tuned. And we're gonna dive into the 10 steps for success and using credit cards as part of a larger financial strategy. If you're gonna win at this game and not be one of the many, many, many more people who lose, and there's lots of reasons for that. Sometimes people end up paying interest, and if you just pay one month interest on a credit card, especially one that has a high, high interest rate, like 25 to 35%, if you do that, that negates so many points. And if you do that a couple, three times a year, then even if you're earning a lot of points, you're really not moving ahead at all. And so when it comes to actually winning at this game, these 10 steps are things that I think are very, very important to getting maximum value and really being able to truly enjoy it. This, what I think is the coolest hobby and one of the most rewarding hobbies that there are. So the first step is know yourself. The truth is, is that this isn't for everybody. And if it isn't for somebody, that doesn't mean it can't be in the future. They've just got to change things about their self, but particularly when it comes to the idea of self-discipline. If you're the kind of person that has to, you know, and you've got to be honest with yourself, you don't have to tell anybody else about it, but just look in the mirror, look in your own psyche and ask, Am I the kind of person who has to always have what I want right now if I have the ability to buy it? Because credit cards will give you the ability to buy things that you can't afford. That, In fact, that's what the banks are banking on you doing. They want you to do that. And so you have to know yourself. You have to ask yourself the question, am I going to be able to be disciplined? Am I going to be able to track my spending? Am I going to be able to follow a budget? Am I going to be able to only spend with my credit cards on things that I was going to have spend on anyway? Or am I going to indulge myself? Am I going to occasionally, when I don't feel good on that day or when I'm having a bad day, am I going to dive in and buy that thing on sale that I really like or whatever it may be? So the first step is you have to know yourself. And beyond that, you have to be honest with yourself and be able to evaluate because if you don't do that, then you're going to start off and it's just going to sink you deeper, deeper, and deeper into a financial hole. Know yourself. The second thing that has to be considered, step two, is you've got to be committed to getting out of debt. Credit cards are a credit tool. They're a loan. They're, they're willing to loan you money. And hopefully, from the credit card's perspective, they want you to borrow that money for a long-term period of time, pay them fees, pay them interest. But these tools can be used for short-term loans. And when you purchase things on that to get the points, and then you pay it off before the payment is due and don't pay any interest, that is a short-term loan with no with you know no downside because you don't have to pay any interest. But if you keep that loan long-term, then you're gonna pay, pay, pay. So I think it's very important before a person gets deep into the credit card game that they already have a commitment to not going into debt. And, and let me tell you, when you pay off debt, 
when you don't owe people in this world, when you don't have those payments looming and the bills coming every month, it is freedom. It is absolute freedom. And it can seem hard, especially when you're young. I remember when my player two and I were young and we, we went many years without very much because we were trying to get out of debt. And we drove old cars because we didn't want to borrow on a new car. And we saved a car payment back so that we'd be able to purchase one someday. And that's all a very difficult thing to do. I mean, getting out of debt takes discipline. It takes commitment. It takes an absolute tenacity. And the, the thing is, is I don't know that people, when they're in debt, need a credit card. They can use a debit card if they need to be able to access their funds and need ease of use when it comes to purchasing. But a credit card, if you're already in debt, it has such a potential to sink you even further. So really, I think before a person dives into this game and into this hobby, they already need to have a mindset of getting out of debt and already need to be well along to that goal of getting out of debt. So is that you? That's what you've got to, again, be honest and evaluate. Maybe it, credit cards and this game and this hobby will be for you, but it's not right now because you haven't yet chipped down that debt. You're not at the point where you can expend your funds and, and, and use your dollars towards getting points. And because of the fact that you, you still need to put every extra dime you have towards getting out of debt. So I think that is, is foremost on this list. After knowing yourself, number two, you've got to be committed to debt-free lifestyle. And if you're not, then frankly, these can get you in such trouble that if you think you're swimming in debt now, you'll be drowning in it when it's all said and done. So know yourself and have a commitment to get out of debt. The third step is you need to discipline yourself to budget and to track your spending. Now, a lot more people budget than track their spending. And I suppose that is the first step. You need to be able to know that you have more money coming in than you have going out. That's kind of the very basic purpose of a budget. But on a budget, what we do in our family is we have a, a spreadsheet that I've made up. It's nothing I bought or it's nothing that you can find out there on the internet. It's just something I came up with myself. And we put down what all of our income is. And then I have all of our bills that have to be paid and when they have to be paid and when they're paid on that, on that spreadsheet, I put a check mark next to them to make sure that for that month, everything gets paid on time. And if you're in the credit card game, you know that your credit score is essential to being able to win at this game. So to, to do that, you got to make sure that everything is paid on time. Preferably, everything is paid early. So your budget will be very important for both knowing that you have more coming in than going out and also making sure everything is paid in a perfect, timely manner. Now, the idea of tracking your spending. To me, when you don't track your spending, and you can do this a number of ways, um, but what it really comes down to is knowing your outgo. So people will often have a budget, but then they don't know that they're spending properly within each of the categories in that budget. So for instance, if you have a category in your budget for dining out, well, if you don't know how much you spent last month on dining out and you don't have some way to keep track of that, then the budget doesn't really mean anything. So periodically, and uh, some people do it, I, I pretty much do it daily, just kind of, I've got a system that goes through and there's a process that's easy that I've developed through the years in my own life. But I know people who do this every few days or they do it every week or whatever it may be, but they track and go back through and see how we spent, how does that fit in the categories we're spending. Because if you don't do that, what's the use of saying we're going to spend this much in this category, but never finding out if you actually do that. So you have to be able to track your spending along with your budget. It's just essential and it needs to be put in place before you dive in heavy to the credit card game. So you got to budget and track your spending. That's the third step along this road. Now, the fourth one really doesn't have a lot to do with credit cards, but it's more about your general 
financial health and your strategy. And that is you need to develop an investment strategy. If you're not even thinking about retirement, if you're not thinking about a rainy day fund or what we often call a wolf wall, which is just if the wolf comes knocking at your door and you need an air conditioner, or you need to repair your car, or you need a transmission or whatever it may be, having reserve money for that, you have a lot of different things you need to save for. And I believe that that's more important than being able to get travel rewards or being able to get cash back. So you need to put that in place as well. What's my saving plan? What's my strategy? And that can be incorporated when you're building your budget. So what is your investment strategy? What are you doing to look for the future and to strive to build so that not only are you in a good financial situation today and to can take the best advantage of these rewards in this game, but that you're going to maintain that lifestyle long, long, long into the future. So what is your investment strategy and plan? The fifth step is really a mindset, which a lot of these things kind of fit into that category. But it's you need to determine, before you apply for those credit cards, you need to determine that you're only going to put spend on those cards that is natural spending. In other words, you're not going to, because you have the card and you want to hit a welcome bonus, go out and buy things you don't need that you wouldn't normally buy. That is a way to dig yourself into a deep hole and to, frankly, throw your budget completely off and to mess up all of the planning and the foundation that you've built to be able to win at this and get the very maximum rewards. So what you don't want to do is derail every plan that you've made, all the foundational steps that you've taken. So you need to determine. You need to be committed. It needs to be a covenant with yourself that I am not going to purchase things that I would not normally purchase. And you know what helps with that is what we talked about when it comes to the budgeting, but particularly the tracking. You'll be able to know, is this what I normally, is this what I spent last month? Is this what I spent the month before in this category? Just do the same thing with credit cards. Make sure you pay them off on time. Never pay a dime of interest. And then you can really rack up truly free rewards. But if you don't do that, then you're playing right into the bank's hand, so to speak, because what they're seeing is you're actually spending more. They're getting those swipe fees and very likely because it's more than you can typically afford and has been budgeted, you'll be paying some interest. And then everything that you thought you were getting from this will be negated. So make a commitment to yourself that you're going to never spend more on those cards than your natural spending, what you would normally spend over the course of a month on the things you would normally spend it on. The sixth step is kind of, I guess, unique to people who get a little farther along into this game. But I found out really quickly, especially at the point where I am, where I have a lot of annual fees and high annual fee cards, is I needed to put the annual fees into my budget. Now, a lot of these cards have credits that kind of give it back to you. There are different ways you can do that. You can, when you get the credits, you know, that Dunkin' Donuts $7 credit or the American Express a platinum cards credit for, you know, all the different Ubers and everything that they give. How do you incorporate that back in? How do you know that you're getting the money back? Well, you can do it several ways. You can put that back into a line item on your on your budget. So what I do is I have a line item on my budget that's for annual fees, but we also have a line item for vacation travel. Well, I budget all of the annual fees under the annual fee, and that's divided up I figured out what all the annual fees are added together for a year, divided that by 12. That's how much goes into that every single month to pay those annual fees. But then all the credits that I get back when I see them on the statement, that gets kind of credited back to the line item on my budget for our travel and for our vacation. So at the end of the day, they pay me back more in annual fees than I receive. But I have to be able to track and have a, a controllable budget to be able to pay those annual fees and not just it be this concept in the wind that well I you know I'm getting I'm getting more than my annual fee back in credits yeah but how are you making sure that at the right time when the bill comes due you have the right amount of money to be able to pay that so I think it's important that a person especially when you get a little farther now at the beginning of this credit card journey you'll probably only have cards that have no annual fee or very low annual fees 
But as you build more and more and have some of these big time cards, you need to be able to think about those annual fees. How do they fit into my family budget? And am I going to be able to track that and have a reasonable way to credit back those different credits that I get for all the things these cards give me as a benefit to offset those annual fees? So plan the annual fees into your budget. Number seven, we're just going to hit it briefly, but it, it's been a, it's not been a part of the list, but it's been kind of incorporated and discussed already. But I had to make it an official official step. Never, never, never pay interest. Just don't ever pay interest. I, my philosophy is except for on a home, a person shouldn't pay interest on anything ever. So um, even if you if you want to buy a car, I think a better way to do that is to have the cash money. And if you can pay for it, pay for it. And you might think, well, that's impossible. Well, let me tell you, it is not impossible. My player two, my wife and I, we, when we were young, we had a very low income and we built up in our careers. But even back then, we just drove older cars and we still made the same car payment all of our friends made. We just made that car payment to ourselves, put it in a separate bank account. You can put it in a separate investment account, or even right now you get pretty good interest in high yield savings accounts. You can put it there. But we just committed, you know, for a few years, we're going to have to drive pieces of junk, but then we're going to be able to have have something nice that we pay for. Now, we will we will finance a car, but what you should do in that situation is you already have the money to pay for it. If you can get a 0% loan, then your money's sitting in the bank earning 45 or 5% interest, and you're not paying anything on the car as far as interest goes. So it's kind of like you're getting paid interest to buy the car. So it's a better strategy, a better way to do it. But some folks, they don't feel they can get to that point. I understand that. But just commit that you're never going to ever pay interest on a credit card. And try to get out of paying interest to anybody anywhere. Now, in a home, that's really hard. But as far as in the rest of your life, don't just don't pay interest. Don't be a slave to that. You be the master of it. So that is, I, we've talked about it over and over. It might be mentioned again, but such an important step. Commit to never pay interest. Now, number eight might be more specific to me and to people who are kind of at the higher level of this game, but sometimes you get so many points and it's like just sitting there and it's not earning anything, no interest or anything like that. So what do you do? Well, for me, I, I thought it was important, number eight, to establish thresholds that you're going to do things with your points, particularly cash back. Because, you know, what, what do you do? What if you have a, a million points and you don't see a way that you're going to be able to spend those? And by the time you spend them, you will have accumulated even more. What if you have 2 million, 3 million, 4 million points? Well, you need to have a plan to what am I going to do? Because if it's just sitting there, if the points are just sitting there, then programs devalue and, so, and you're not earning anything on that. So I, I have a plan for, you know, if I hit certain thresholds with certain point currencies, I'm going to cash those out and invest that money, save that money, or use that money for another purpose. So I think that's important is that you you have a comprehensive plan, in the especially in the late game of this, as to what am I going to do when I get to certain thresholds in regard to my points. Number nine is don't go too fast. I think that's a, a real problem in this game. And, and I'm not going to say like most creators do that, well, it's all about 524, 524, I, because I, I kind of hold a different opinion than many in that I don't see Chase as the absolute end all of everything. They're very valuable. I do have a lot of Chase cards, but, you know, there are other good issuers. I really love City. I think their earnings are out of this world, and I just I just like their, their ecosystem. So, they're, you know, you might love American Express. You might have all of them. But when it comes to this game, it's important don't go too fast. Pace yourself. Because what you don't want to do is get in a situation where you get four or five cards and then you don't have the ability to naturally make the spend to reach the, the reach the required spending to get those, those bonuses. And if you don't, well, then you're going to put money on the card possibly that you don't have or that wouldn't be budgeted, that's not natural spending. And then you're in trouble with, you know, carrying a balance or you might not get your bonus. And that that is just like the cardinal sin in the points and miles community. So just pace yourself. I think a good pace 
It's maybe in the beginning, a card every six months. Later on, we try to do like a card every four or five months. And that seems to be a good pace because then you're getting a bonus frequently and that's kind of steadily building. And then when you're not getting a bonus, you can spend on the right cards and make sure you're maximizing your point multipliers. But just don't go too fast. I think that's very important. And then the final step in all of this is enjoy it. I mean, when you have this foundation we've talked about from step one now to step 10, then you have just, you've built yourself an environment in which you can rack up those points. You can have great, great experiences. You can go on trips you'd never be able to go on or go on those trips in a style you never thought you'd be able to and fly in business class and stay in an over water villas in the Maldives or whatever floats your boat on all of that. But it, it's just it's just the coolest hobby ever if it's not stressful, if you don't feel like those credit cards are going to sink you, if you're actually getting value from it and not paying them. And so build the foundation and then enjoy it. Love it. Have a great time. So I hope this is helpful to you. If you disagree, if you think there's some steps I missed, put those down in the comments below. Also check out my, my webpage at www.therewardsmaster.com. Thank you for being here. I hope it's blessed you. We're all, we're all a part of this game and in this hobby together. And hopefully as many of us as possible, we can find a way to win. All right. Have a great day. Take care. We'll see you here next time.